Hello, and welcome to the Bible for Worship at St. Paul Lutheran Church on this 10th Sunday after Pentecost, when our scripture reading is written in the New Testament letter to the Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to know the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In a recent Bible study at St. Paul, a number of us were introduced to a phrase by the author Glenn Powell, and the phrase is Scripture McNuggets. Those little bite-sized chunks of Scripture that accompany us through life, perhaps on our t-shirts or on buttons or stickers or on a rock on our desk or on a baseball cap. Brief little bits of scripture that in their own right have value perhaps as a summary of a worldview that is ours or perhaps as a reminder of a key piece of our faith that we don't want to forget. And there are a few places in scripture where these Scripture McNuggets pile up more quickly and come out more regularly than here in the first part of this fourth chapter of the letter to the Ephesians. You heard them as I read, one Lord, one faith, one baptism for the equipping of the saints for ministry, speaking the truth in love, just three of the examples that we can remember. And yet there is more here than these scripture McNuggets. There is here a complete image of the church and what it is called to be. One of the characteristics of Ephesians is that it has these enormously long sentences as though the author had to fit all of these ideas together into one sentence simultaneously, lest we get stuck, caught up, thinking that any one of these pieces might be the whole point. No, 
it goes on and on. You heard these long sentences with relative clauses and pauses and commas, but so few actual full stops in the reading. It goes on and on and piles all of this into the picture of the church as it is called to be. Called to be. A vocation is the word that's used. A calling. So that what the church should be is not a matter of something self-generated. It's not a matter of becoming self actualized, but rather it's a calling that comes from outside us. It's a vocation, not in the sense of our job or our career, but that which God calls us to be. And for the church as a whole, that calling from God reflects who God is. And since as the author tells us, there is one God and Father of all. There is one Lord. Therefore, there is one faith, one baptism, and the church is called to oneness. But don't get hung up on that oneness. We'll come back to that in a moment. See, this author was dealing with a community that seemed to be divided between those who came to hear the gospel that was being preached out of a Jewish background and those who came to hear that gospel out of a Gentile background. And where they might have thought there was a wall that divided them in chapter 2, this writer proclaims in the gospel that that dividing wall has been removed so that there is one people of God. And yet, just as soon as that affirmation is made, the writer goes on to say, but each of us is given grace differently, according to how Christ measures it out. And there immediately comes this image of the diversity of the oneness within the oneness echoing Paul's language in the first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 12, talking about the church as the body of Christ, where there are many different parts and members, and yet they come together to be one body with Christ as the head. That imagery is exactly what this author is writing about, that all are growing together in their differences, with their various gifts, to be apostles, pastors, teachers, servants in different ways within the community, all are growing together toward Christ, and all must exercise their gifts for the sake of building, equipping the saints, and building up to be the body of Christ. And since all have different gifts and all are growing. The characteristics of relating to one another in this community are humility and gentleness and patience. There's a remarkable catalog toward the end of chapter 4 in verse 31 of what this doesn't look like. Bitterness, wrath, anger, wrangling, slander and malice. How easy it is for us to hear and see those things in others and be tempted to call out those others with this word from Ephesians for gentleness and humility and patience when we feel ourselves the object of the wrath, the anger, the bitterness, the slander, the wrangling, the malice. This writer, writing to the Ephesians, understands that it is God who calls us out. It is God who spots these things in us and calls us out, not just for our faults, 
but into a life worthy of God's people, whomever they may be. God bless.